I think at some point we may have to leave the Earth forever. In five billion years, the sun will expand, the mountains will melt, the oceans will boil, the sky will be on fire, and we will have the last nice day. In recent years, there has been a remarkable upswing in lunar exploration, with both space agencies and private enterprises deploying cutting-edge technology to delve into the mysteries of the moon. Among the most groundbreaking of these discoveries is the presence of water ice at the moon's poles. This transformative finding not only redefines our understanding of what the moon holds, but also opens thrilling new avenues for future space exploration and potential colonization. The pivotal confirmation of water ice in the moon's permanently shadowed regions came from the concerted efforts of several missions, employing advanced remote sensing technologies. Notable among these are NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and the Moon Mineralogy Mapper Instrument on India's Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft. These instruments were crucial in detecting the reflective signatures and absorption patterns that are characteristic of ice, particularly within the craters at the Moon's South Pole. These craters are perpetual dark spots, never touched by sunlight, preserving the ice within them. The implications of finding water ice on the Moon are profound. For starters, water is vital for life support, offering hydration and a source of breathable oxygen when electrolyzed. Moreover, hydrogen and oxygen, which are derivable from water, are potent rocket propellants. Mining and refining lunar water into fuel could drastically cut the costs of space missions, making prolonged and more sustainable exploration ventures feasible. Additionally, water can be combined with lunar regolith to create building materials for constructing habitats that protect astronauts from cosmic and solar radiation. While estimates suggest that these shadowed regions could contain millions of tons of water ice, the actual accessibility of this ice could vary. Factors such as the ice's purity, depth, and the environmental conditions within these cold, dark craters pose significant challenges for any robotic mission aiming to harvest it. Scientifically, lunar water ice is a treasure trove of information. It holds clues about the moon's geological past and the broader evolutionary narrative of our solar system. For instance, Analyzing the isotopic makeup of this ice could tell us about its origins, whether it came from comets, asteroids, or the solar wind, providing critical insights into how both the Earth and the Moon may have acquired their water. Drawing a parallel, the discovery of water ice on the Moon can be likened to the conditions found in Antarctica's dry valleys. Known as one of the driest places on Earth, the dry valleys are akin to Mars, and in terms of cold and dryness, the Moon, they contain water ice deposits mostly as permafrost or within permanently shadowed cliff areas. The similarities between these earthly valleys and the moon's poles are striking, as both locations offer unique natural laboratories for studying life in extreme conditions. The persistence of water in shadowed environments and the possibilities for utilizing local resources during space missions. This comparison not only underscores the scientific value of lunar ice, but also enhances our understanding of life's potential in extreme environments across the universe. While the scientific discoveries about the moon's water ice offer a concrete foundation for future exploration, there are other aspects of lunar exploration that drift into the more speculative and imaginative realms of thought. Among these are theories about the intentional design behind the moon's tidal locking with Earth and the existence of alien bases on its surface. While these ideas are not supported by empirical evidence, they showcase human curiosity and our innate desire to find deeper meaning and mystery in the cosmos. Tidal locking, the gravitational phenomenon where the Moon takes the same amount of time to orbit Earth as it does to complete one rotation on its axis, ensures the same side of the Moon always faces Earth. Some believe this precise synchronization is too perfect to be natural and argue it must be the result of intentional design by advanced civilizations or extraterrestrial beings. However, the scientific explanation points to tidal locking as a natural outcome of gravitational interactions between two bodies. Over time, Earth's gravitational pull exerts a torque on the Moon, gradually slowing its rotation until the periods of its orbit and rotation synchronize. This phenomenon is common throughout the solar system, seen in every major moon of Jupiter and Saturn, reinforcing that it's a natural process. The theory of alien bases on the Moon is spurred by interpretations of anomalous photographic evidence and anecdotal reports. Proponents of this idea point to unusual structures, lights or shapes in lunar photographs as indicators of extraterrestrial activity. These anomalies include transient lunar phenomena such as flashes of light or changes in the lunar surface's appearance and peculiar features resembling artificial structures. Scientifically, however, 
transient lunar phenomena are attributed to natural causes like meteorite impacts, lunar seismic activity, or outgassing events. When it comes to strange structures, close examination usually reveals natural formations such as unusual crater patterns, lava tubes, or instances of pareidolia, where people see familiar shapes in random patterns. Similar speculative theories are not just limited to our moon, but can also be found in discussions about Mars's moon Phobos. Its unusual orbit and shape have led to hypotheses about its origins, including some that suggest it might be artificial. These theories, much like those surrounding the moon, reflect a continuation of historical human behavior where celestial objects inspire narratives and myths. While theories about the intentional design behind the moon's characteristics captivate the imagination, the scientific community continues to explore more grounded explanations for the moon's origin. Over the centuries, several theories have emerged, each offering unique insights into how our closest celestial neighbor came into existence. These theories not only shed light on the moon's formation, but also provide clues about the early solar system, Earth's history, and the dynamic processes that shape celestial bodies. One of the most prominent theories is the giant impact hypothesis, which suggests that the moon was born from the debris left over after a colossal collision between the early Earth and a Mars-sized body known as Theia. This hypothesis is widely supported for several reasons. First, the chemical composition of the Earth and moon is strikingly similar, particularly in terms of their oxygen isotopes, a fact that points to a common origin. Furthermore, advanced computer simulations that model the conditions of the early solar system suggest that such giant impacts were common. These models show that a collision of this magnitude could indeed produce a debris disk from which the moon could coalesce. Additionally, this theory accounts for the current angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system and explains why the moon orbits in the plane of Earth's equator, rather than the ecliptic plane as one might expect if the moon had been captured or had formed independently from Earth. Another theory, known as the capture theory, proposes that the moon was originally a wandering body that was captured by Earth's gravitational pull. Although this theory provides a straightforward explanation for the moon's presence, it struggles with several key issues. The most significant challenge is the similarity in the composition of Earth and moon rocks, which suggests that the moon originated near Earth rather than in a distant part of the solar system. Moreover, the mechanics of capturing a celestial body into a stable orbit around a planet, particularly with the necessary dissipation of energy and resulting system system's angular momentum are complex and difficult to reconcile with the observed properties of the Earth-Moon system. Binary accretion theory offers a different perspective, suggesting that the Earth and Moon formed side by side from the same circumstellar disk, growing as a paired system. This would naturally explain their compositional similarities. However, this theory struggles to explain the current angular momentum and orbital dynamics of the Earth-Moon system. Additionally, it does not account for the disproportionate size of the Moon's core relative to its mantle. The giant impact hypothesis, by contrast, suggests that the impact could have preferentially ejected mantle material from Earth, resulting in a Moon with a smaller core. Further enriching the scientific discourse, some recent advancements have led to variations of the giant impact hypothesis, such as the Synestia theory. This newer theory proposes that the impact between Earth and Theia created a high-temperature form of planetary object called a Synestia, a donut-shaped mass of vaporized rock from which the Moon eventually condensed. This idea aims to address some of the unanswered questions regarding the specific dynamics and composition of the Earth-Moon system. Each theory, with its strengths and weaknesses, contributes to our understanding of lunar formation and mirrors the broader processes that may occur throughout the cosmos. For example, comparing the moon's formation to the origins of Jupiter's and Saturn's moons, which are thought to have formed from the gas and dust surrounding those planets, highlights the uniqueness of our lunar companion and underscores the diverse mechanisms that can give rise to moons in our solar system.